So, if you remember yesterday's race, the Canadians beat the Dutch in a very dramatic finish. The British won in the World Cup in Varese. They are the world bronze medalists. And uh, really done well this season so far. A little bit close to those boys on the island, Andrea. A little bit, I mean, this is where uh, in a pairs race, it's so key to have equal power application. One of these rowers are going to have a foot toe steering to help keep them in line, but in that first 30 seconds when the adrenaline is pumping, it can be hard to get off the line nice and straight, but it looks like um, both crews are going straight. And yes, you're right, the Canadians did an absolute barn burner yesterday, so we know that they have that in the tank. Canada on the top of your picture, two young men. Walkie and Cullen, and uh, I did talk to um, Jack Walkie's mum, Colleen Miller, who's here. Jack, her dad, uh, Colleen, was a world champion in the lightweight women's double skulls, and uh, Jack rode in the Canadian Eight in the 90s. So that is the bow man of the Canadian pair on the top of your picture. And this is a co combination that has rowed together before at UW. Uh, so we know that they know how to row together well. Uh, they're a coach right now by Max and Kempsey. Yeah, what's he like as a coach? Incredibly detail-oriented. I uh, asked him when I first started out, how do you do a 2K? And he said, well, you know, on the eighth stroke, you need to do, uh, had it down to the fraction of a second of what I should be seeing on my screen. So. He will have uh, given all the biomech to these guys on what they're supposed to do and how to execute their race plan. So on the right of your picture, it's the British pair, Tom George in the stroke seat, and Ollie Wynn Griffith on this fantastic course that we can see here at Henley. There's a view right down the course from, I think, the finish camera. On the left of your picture, it's the British pair. They currently lead the Canadian pair by some uh, two, three, four lengths, I think. Just to give you some idea, the British pair set the fastest time for a British pair, I think, at the Varese World Cup. I think it's 6.13 or something like that. And uh, the Canadians beat the sixth place pair in that Varese final in yesterday's semi. So. I guess that puts them, the British should put about 10 seconds on the Canadians in this race. We also know that the GB team are good with uh, an easy restart. They had a little bit of a dramatic race last uh, yesterday, didn't they? Yeah, hopefully no dramas for that. Uh, Wing Griffith and George had to stop in their race. A Harvard eight, a Masters eight that were doing a row pass came past and stopped the eight. But I think the Canadians have done really well, you know, Andrea. They kind of checked the British move, who have that blisteringly fast first 500 metres. And the Canadians just right in there, which is so impressive to see. And even more impressive when we know that this is their first senior regatta. Uh, they're so excited to be part of the team, talking to them earlier today, um, to be part of the crew that they've been looking up to for so long, despite their limited time training together. And they said that their race plan is keep things simple, stay relaxed and find their rhythm, because as we know on this course, anything can happen. So it sounds like a solid race strategy to me. Nice, easy finish from Tom George, the man who can pull 539.6 for the 2K Ergo. First Brit to go, sub 540 in lockdown, and yet he doesn't have a Henley medal. Got an Olympic bronze medal in the men's aids with his schoolboy friend at Radley, Oli Wynn Griffith, but uh, Wynn Griffith has got one Henley medal for Yale back in 2015. Tom George hasn't got any, so this will be a big celebration for the 28-year-old if he does cross the line first. It's looking pretty likely at the moment, Andre. It is, but I love watching these pairs rowing because the amount of technical ability you have to have is unreal. I talk to people about rowing, it's kind of like a balance beam on a tightrope walker, except in a pair, you only have half of the balance beam. So the amount of synchronicity that these athletes have to demonstrate is, is really unlike any other um, combination. Well, these two Brits rode the pair last year. They had a fantastic result at Lucerne, they beat the New Zealanders who conquered them here by a narrow margin in the final of the goblets. Didn't have 
quite the world championships they wanted. They were battling for bronze, which in the end they won. It's the two Canadians, Andrea. The two Canadians, yes, O Canada, and a huge support on the on the banks as well, with lots of supporters coming over. So I saw a Canadian flag in the background of the crowd earlier. I wonder if uh, that's factored in. And here we come in towards the wall of noise uh, of the stewards' enclosure, and that gives as an athlete such a big bump uh, to your confidence to hear people cheering Canada from the sidelines. Yeah. No drama from the Brits there. Tom George closest to us. Nice, easy back turn. You see that outside shoulder, just that flow out. You could see Ollie Griffith matching behind him. That's something they've really done a lot better since they lost to the Romanian, uh, not to the Romanians, to the Swiss in the European Championships. They went away with their coach Dan Moore and decided what they would do better just to get more flow and more natural length out the front ends. That was the answer and they've delivered that. They're going really well. Yeah, flow is the word right there. They look like they're letting the boat run underneath them, really taking advantage of bringing the boat underneath and gathering underneath their feet. Back of the 29-year-old, Wynn Griffith. Fantastic guy, really switched on about his sport. Changed sides in this uh, to row on bow side. He was a stroke side rower in the Tokyo Olympics, but he switched sides when he went to Cambridge for the boat race, which enabled him to row this pair with his schoolboy friend Tom George. And the Canadians aren't giving up there, Andrea. Oh, we'll see some gritty tenacity from all the Canadians, I think, in the races to come. But we know that in Henley, you need to leave it all on the line. And that's what this combination said they were going to do. Go out and leave their best race on the course. So this is a moment like no other for any role on the course. You've seen it all this afternoon. It's fantastic coming by the packed enclosures. Doesn't matter whether it's a close race or how far up you are. The crowds roar and cheer. And they know this British pair, Tom George, looks around to check where he is. This British pair aiming for gold in Paris in 2024 if they successfully qualify at this year's World Championships. This is part of their journey. They will be going to Lucerne next week to race the world's best. So will these two young Canadians. But it is a comfortable victory for the British in the end. No dramas, no fuss. George and Wynne Griffith win the silver goblets and nickels, and they celebrate. Canada crossed the line. Yeah, Tom, that's your first Henley medal. The red box is yours, finally. Wynne Griffith and George beat Wolke and Cullen. And that acknowledgement from both crews to each other, job well done, whether that's a hip hip hooray or a thumbs up, is really speaks to what the sport is all about. Yeah, it does. I love that gesture of Ollie Wynn Griffith. He's so pleased. I think because they've done it together, you know, they're still friends. They rode together in the Cambridge boat race, they rode together at Radley, they rode together in the Olympic 8. They're in this pair now. Look at the look on Tom George's face. 